this is Fit Liz Kitchen where it's Liz, that's me, getting fit, well, I'm trying, in the kitchen. If you're new here, I'm Liz and I follow a whole food plant-based, no oil, sugar, or added salt diet. Um, this is not just a diet to lose weight, although I am working on that. Um, it's a lifestyle um, and I'm going to eat this way for the rest of my life for optimum health and um, honestly, I just really love eating this way. It makes me really happy and energetic and healthy. So. I am, I did mention that I'm on a weight loss journey. I am, uh, as of the day I'm filming this, I've lost 126 pounds. If you're following along from week to week, I only lost a pound last week, but I still have, <laughs> I still have a boot on my foot. I'm really thankful and grateful for it though, because it helps me get around and I'm doing fine just being in the kitchen and cooking. Um, but I am limited on what I can do on exercise. And I've mentioned before, um, but if you don't know, I'm taking a medication. It makes it hard for me to lose weight and easy for me to gain weight is the way I've had multiple doctors explain this to me, um, but it is a medication I have to be on right now for my health. Um, it's fighting me. Uh, I'm still eating really healthfully and hitting all my targets, um, but unfortunately, because I can't uh, expend more calories with exercise, um, my weight loss has slowed, but I'm really happy to have just lost a pound. Like that's way better than staying the same or even gaining. So my whole goal this month while I'm in this boot is to not gain. Um, so that's just my goal for right now. And as soon as the doctor clears me for exercise, I'm gonna go right back to swimming and cycling and running. They say I can <laughs> um, and definitely hiking if I can um, because now the weather is beautiful and I really like to hike. Um, so anyway. <laughs> Um, today I am here to show you how I make these awesome burrito bowls. Um, everything in here is 100% whole food plant-based. It's vegan, it's no added sugar or oil. Um, I use miso and dulse instead of salt. Um, I will leave a link below about why miso is better than salt. However, you do what you need to do. If you can't have any added sodium at all, do not add the miso. Um, you can use more dulse or you can just use more lime or lemon juice and things that you can have. And if you don't care about the sodium, you're not watching your sodium, um, you can totally just use salt to taste. Um, so just use whatever you need to use. So anyway, in this big amazing bowl, I have brown rice, black beans, um, that are spiced and they're more than just opening a can of black beans. I made lime rice. I would have done cilantro, but my partner doesn't like cilantro, so I just put my cilantro on top of my bowl. Um, I have a whole heart of romaine lettuce. I have fajita veggies and I have a uh, corn salsa pico de gallo type situation. Um, and then I have cilantro and a tofu sour cream and a nacho cheese sauce. Um, and if you wanna know how to make the nacho cheese sauce, uh, I'll put a link up there and down below on how you can make that because I already have a video on that from when I made my bell pepper nachos. So that was a mouthful because this is a stomach full. Um, this makes me really full, makes me really happy. I'm going to eat this, this entire thing. And then this bowl is my partner's. It's basically the same, except there's more rice, there's more beans because um, they are very tall and they can eat more calories than I can. And then theirs has no cilantro, but it does have hot sauce. So I'm going to uh, show you how to make all of this and I really hope you enjoy it. If you like this video, please hit that like button and give this video a thumbs up. It really helps the channel grow. The like button helps YouTube know to show it to more people. Comments help, um, subscribes help, shares really help. And, and the longer you watch the video helps, but the like button is a really easy, quick thing you can do and it really helps me out. So please do that if you like this video. Um, if you're wanting to leave a comment, please be nice. Um, you can leave me a comment or a question on this recipe or you can uh, request a future uh, video or a recipe. Um, I'm very happy to make things that y'all suggest. Um, and also just like to make the things that I like to eat and show you all the awesome uh, food that I'm creating while I'm on this journey. If you're new here, please subscribe. Um, it also helps the channel grow and I really love building this community. It's really fun to share recipes with y'all every week and I would love for you to join us. So without any further ado, let's get into the video and how to make these delicious burrito bowls. I have a pan uh, lined with a uh, silicone baking mat. It looks like it's uh, dirty, but it's not. It's just old and it's seen better days. Um, but <laughs> uh, so I have my oven going at 400 uh, Fahrenheit, which would be 200 degrees Celsius about, and I'm going to add all my veggies to the tray. 
I used four bell peppers, one of each color, just to be pretty. You can use whatever you like. I like to make a lot of fajita veggies because I like to bulk out the meal and make it mostly vegetables. Um, that way I can lower the calorie density and still eat a large portion. I just cut my peppers in thin strips. I know that uh, Chipotle does not add mushrooms to their fajitas, uh, but I do because I like them. So I have a pound of baby bella. Portobello would look awesome because they you could cut them in strips just like the bell peppers, but but I can't find portobello mushrooms in my town, so baby bella it is. And then I also have a red onion. This unfortunately is a little small, but this is what I have, so we'll make it work. Um, and then I'm gonna just kind of break up the red onion a little bit. I know that this pan is really full um, and that I could break it into two pans if I wanted the vegetables to get more browned and less wilted, but I like them soft so I can kind of pile them in my bowl. So just do whatever works for you. And you can choose any onion you want for your fajitas, but when you cook red onions, they get sweeter. Um, and that spicy bite that a raw red onion has, which not that spicy, but some people don't like it, and including I used to not like it, that spicy bite goes away. So my favorite onion for any kind of roasting is always red onion. Okay, so now I'm just gonna give this a toss. Oh, first I need to add the spices. So I have here uh, granulated garlic, black pepper, chili powder, and cumin. You don't have to season your fajitas. You could also just season them with pepper. You could use a taco seasoning. I'm just showing you what I like to do. And again, like this is all kind of falling. You might want to spread this between two baking sheets. I make these all the time and I like it kind of all mixed together on one baking sheet and it works well for me and less dishes to clean, which is always good since my partner is so kind to do all the dishes and I would like to, you know, not make too many uh, additional if I can help it, which, you know, I make a lot of dishes. All right, I'm just gonna spread this to the corners of the pan and I'm going to bake this at 400 Fahrenheit for about 30 minutes and I will stir it halfway through. Okay, I just took my rice out of the Instant Pot. Um, if I had timed it better, um, it would uh, be done later uh, when the fajitas are done, but I did not time it uh, very well because I was just busy chopping vegetables and stuff, so it is what it is. It'll still be delicious. Um, so I am gonna make the sour cream now. So I have some silken tofu. Um, and then I have some miso paste. Uh, this takes the place of the salt in the recipe. And um, if you're wondering why I use miso instead of salt, I will leave a link uh, to an article that explains that uh, miso is better for you than salt. Um, so I'll leave a link uh, below about that. And I'm just gonna add this to my recipe. Hello, thank you. Um, and then I have some lemon juice that I squeezed. I'm lying. It was bottled. Um, and that's literally it. So I'm gonna blend that until it's nice and smooth. There is our sour cream. If you wanted a thicker sour cream, one thing you can do is refrigerate it because it does thicken up quite a bit in the fridge. So if you want a super thick sour cream, make it the day before because the 24 hours later, it will definitely be a lot thicker. If you want a richer sour cream, you could add in some um, soaked raw cashews or soaked raw sunflower seeds. This would make it richer, but more calorically dense and higher fat. So it's just up to you what you like. I'm perfectly fine with the silken um, tofu, just silken tofu, and it makes it super low fat and high protein. Oh, and you should probably taste it just to make sure it's good. That's delicious. It's a little lemony, it's a little salty, it's so good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in the fridge so it can chill until we're ready to use it. All right, now we can make our black beans. And this is gonna be the protein for the meal. If you wanna make sofritas, there are tons of recipes online for that. But I wanted to uh, just stick with black beans because that's what I like in my burrito bowl. <laughs> so you, what you wanna do is heat a nonstick pot over medium heat. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour this whole can of black beans in, including the liquid, because this is a no salt added uh, variety. So I'm not gonna add a ton of salt by doing this. If your black beans uh, come in salt and you wanna rinse them and you don't wanna use the liquid, or if you get an upset tummy when you eat canned beans, it's probably the liquid. Rinse them really, really well. Um, and you can use like a little bit of vegetable broth instead of the bean liquid. Use your spatula to get out any black beans that are stuck to the bottom. 
You can also make dried beans from scratch ahead of time. I did not. So the nice thing about using the bean liquid is that this is already pretty thick and then I'm gonna season it and let it come, oops, <laughs> and let it come to a boil and then reduce it um, just a little bit so that it's more thick and soupy. Uh, so here I have the seasonings that I'm gonna be using. This is definitely not an authentic recipe at all. This is just what I like to use. So I have granulated onion, granulated garlic, cumin, uh, chili powder, oregano, and my salt replacement for this is dulse flakes. You could use more miso, or you can use salt if you prefer salt. Um, dulse flakes add a nice saltiness to this, plus they're a good way to get in some iodine if you don't use iodized salt. So I'm just gonna stir those spices in, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring that to a boil over medium heat, and then I'll turn the heat down to low and just let it simmer for like 10 minutes. Um, but while that's happening, I'm gonna try and move this slightly. Don't try this at home. All right, so while that's uh, coming to a boil, it's actually already starting to bubble. Um, I'm going to make the salsa. And you can definitely save a lot of time here by buying pre-made pico de gallo or just use your favorite jarred salsas. I made my own just to try it out uh, and my goodness, it was delicious. You'll see in my um, bell pepper nachos recipe video that I used store-bought pico de gallo and it was pretty good, but this was next level. Um, and it was nice to be able to add the fire roasted corn and make my own. Um, but you didn't see me chopping all this stuff, which took a long time. Uh, so definitely uh, you can save some time by using store-bought pico de gallo. Sometimes they add salt to it, so be careful if you are watching your sodium. So I have um, about like five or six uh, Roma tomatoes here. I did have to sub in some vine tomatoes because I couldn't find Roma, more Roma tomatoes at my store. Um, so this is about four cups of diced tomatoes. You just want to be sure that you don't use too mushy of tomatoes because then your salsa will be mushy. That's generally how it works. I'm going to add a white chopped white onion. This is just one large jalapeno. If you want to control the spice, remove the seeds and the veins. Cilantro, you'll see that I only have a little cilantro here. This is just because I'm just gonna put it on my bowl when I'm done. I'm not gonna put any cilantro in my pico de gallo, even though it is a traditional ingredient. But that is because I'm also serving my partner who does not like cilantro and I don't want them to not be able to eat this. And now I also have about a cup, cup and a half, you can really do this to taste, of fire roasted corn that was frozen. Um, you can just use regular corn too. Uh, but I like the fire roasted. This is defrosted, by the way. Oh, I gotta stir my black beans. You'll see here they're looking nice and soupy. But I'm gonna let them reduce a little while longer since we still have a bit more time on the fajitas. Okay. And then the final thing I'm gonna add to my salsa is a little bit of lime juice. You can add salt if you want to. Um, if you're not adding salt, you could do a little thinned uh, miso paste, just mix a tablespoon of miso with two tablespoons of warm, not hot water and just kind of whisk it up. Um, that will add saltiness to your salsa, but you know what, I didn't add any saltiness to my salsa and I really didn't think that it needed it, my, my pico de gallo. I just really didn't feel like th there was enough flavor there that I didn't need to add that. Plus there's um, more saltiness in my sour cream and my nacho cheese sauce. That's what I was looking for. I'm going to give this a good stir. All right, so there is our pico de gallo. It looks really awesome. It does have corn, which is not traditional. Um, and you can definitely also use a medium or a hot salsa here if that's what you like. Um, my partner also puts Cholula on their bowl to make it a little bit more spicy for their taste buds and their stomach, which is apparently much stronger than mine. So I'm gonna put my pico aside. Probably just put that in there. Give this another stir. It's getting quite thick, so I'm gonna reduce the heat quite a bit want it to reduce just a little bit more so that's why I'm leaving it on the heat instead of just removing it from the heat but if you once you get it to the point where you enjoy it and you like it then you can take it off the heat oh and the other good thing is to taste it that's pretty good I'm gonna put in some lime juice uh, when it's done but I'm, I'm pretty happy with that right now all right so here are my fajita veggies so far let me give these a toss 
and let them cook a little bit longer. If you like your bell peppers still a little firm, you can definitely be done, you know, to stop the oven now. So I'm gonna put it back in for 15 more minutes. Okay, I'm gonna stop my uh, black beans now because I'll show you what they look like. They're very thick. There's not much liquid. It's all kind of cohesive. Um, and that's where I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna let these cool for a little bit before I add lime juice because once, if you add citrus to a really hot dish, Sometimes you lose some of the citrus flavor due to the heat, so I let it cool a little bit before I add the lime juice. Speaking of which, my rice has now cooled enough to add lime juice. This is just um, brown short grain rice that I cooked in my Instant Pot. You can cook rice however you want. You can use white rice, brown rice, whatever you want. I just like to cook it in my Instant Pot because it kind of turns out perfect every time. Uh, I do one and a third cups of uh, dry rice, which I rinse really well. Um, and then I add two cups of water and cook it on high pressure for 20 minutes with a quick release. I'll put that in the description box below. So if you have an Instant Pot, you can cook rice too. This is our rice. I'm gonna add some lime juice. You can add uh, salt or thin miso if you want to. You can add cilantro to this if everyone who is enjoying it enjoys cilantro. Like I said, my partner does not like cilantro, so I just put it on top of my bowl at the end so see, there's my nice rice. And I'll put this aside until I'm ready to serve. All right, so I'm gonna start off here with a bowl of lettuce. Um, I like to put it on the bottom so I can portion out my bowl and I kind of like the salsa and everything to go on top of the lettuce. So this is just the way I like to build it. You build it the way that you like to build it. Also, of course, you can put all this stuff in a burrito. You can put it in tacos. Eat it however you want to eat it. Eat it like a salad with mostly lettuce or eat it like a burrito bowl with no lettuce and mostly rice. Do whatever feels best for you. So I'm gonna start off with the amount of rice I like to use, which is a cup. So I personally use a cup. This works for me and my calorie goals and my satiation levels. I've made this bowl a bunch of times and this is how much I like. Use the amount that you like. Now I'm gonna add some black beans. This is about a half cup, which is personally the amount I like to use. I did mix in the lime juice into the black beans just off camera. So now I'm gonna add a ton of fajita veggies. I usually do about a third to a half of the pan for myself. And now I'm gonna bring my salsa over here and I'm gonna add some salsa. I'll add it on top of the lettuce. I like to do quite a bit. Now I'm gonna add my cilantro. Now I will add the sauces. I'm gonna do my cheese sauce first. You can just ladle it on, but I like to put it in a squeeze bottle so I can make it look fancy. And now I have my sour cream that I made earlier. And there we go. <laughs> there is my delicious bowl. I am gonna make one for my partner now. All right, so I think we should give this a try, don't you? <laughs> um, this is our delicious whole food plant-based, low salt, no oil or sugar uh, burrito bowl. Um, and of course there's no actual added salt, but I do use miso. Again, use no miso if you prefer, use regular salt if you prefer, do whatever makes um, the most sense for how you like to eat. Anyway, um, I'm gonna try to get a little bit of everything. You could also mix this up if you want to. I'm gonna take a little bit of black beans, a little bit of rice, grabbing a pepper, grabbing a little bit of lettuce, grabbing a little bit of salsa. Ooh, I'm gonna try this. Mm. It's an explosion of flavors. It's totally delicious. I love everything. It's so good. Everything together is amazing. And this is so much more healthy and more flavorful and just so awesome that you can control all the sodium and no oil and all that stuff um, versus takeout. And if you want to make things easier on yourself, use store-bought pico de gallo. Um, you can prep most of these ingredients uh, in advance. You can make the rice in advance. You can make the beans in advance. You can make the fajitas in advance. They last, the fajitas last about three to four days in the fridge. You can just reheat them when you're ready. Um, the, Pico de Gallo, um, it lasts about two to three days. Um, the tomatoes start to get a little soft after that point, um, but I'd recommend maybe making, leaving the salsa to make 
you know, just before you're ready to serve. You can make the nacho cheese sauce and the tofu sour cream in advance. Um, so really you can just build your bowl or a burrito or tacos any way you want um, when you're ready. And this would be also great for like a build your own kind of party or just a way to feed a bunch of people um, in a way that people can just serve themselves whatever they want. Um, so yeah, I really hope you like this recipe. I really hope you give it a try. Please leave me a comment if you try it. I'd love to know how it worked out for you. You can find the whole printable recipe and any substitutions, tips, and ideas um, in the link below that goes to my blog. It's free. You can access it anytime you want. Um, and you can also find the recipe in the description box below. And yeah, I will shut up now. I'm going to eat this and I hope you have a great day. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> You're weird. I love it. I love it too. Mm -hmm.